Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. Thank you for clicking on this video. If you are someone who enjoys talking about film, how about clicking that subscribe button? So today we're gonna to be talking about The Dark Knight Rises. I just wanna say maybe a different day for you, but it's still the same day for me and my air is still broken. With that said, if you see my little blue ice pack, just ignore it. The movie is rated PG-13. It did come out in 2012. And of course, it is directed by Christopher Nolan. And of course, it is the finale out of the Dark Knight trilogy. Uh, now, we do get, of course, Christian Bell back as Batman, uh, Michael Caine as Alfred, Gary Oldman as the commissioner, and uh, Morgan Freeman as Lucius Fox. Um, now, the newcomers would be my boyfriend, well, one of my boyfriends, Tom Hardy as Kane and Hathaway as Catwoman, uh, Marianne Cotier, see, that's what it is, as Talia, and Joseph Gordon-Levitt as John Blake. I did not know he came out of this movie when I saw him. I went, hey, look at you. What you doing there? You you are here. And then he, like, stays with the movie. I said, no, you are, like, here to stay. Literally at the very end of the movie, we find out that his apparently real name is Robin. Since Batman is technically dead, like could he be the next Batman? Just because, you know, throughout the three movies, they do make it a point to say that Batman is just kind of like a figure that anybody could be Batman. So he could be training to be Batman, but it's kind of like Robin as Batman. Again, anybody could wear the cape. Because uh, of course, there at the end, he does find uh, the Bat Cave. I remember when they did announce Anne Hathaway uh, was cast as Catwoman. I was a little bit like, mm, I don't know about this. Mind you, I'm a fan of Anne Hathaway. I know that she gets a lot of hate. I really don't understand why, but I love Anne Hathaway. I've loved her since Princess Diaries, but I do know that a lot of people do find her annoying. So I'm gonna go ahead and just say that off the bat, I thought she killed it as Catwoman and she looked damn good doing it as well. She may have actually pushed Michelle Pfeiffer out of my favorite Catwoman. Neil, to be honest with you, I don't know. That might be pushing it. I love me some Michelle Pfeiffer. From the Dark Knight to the Dark Knight Rises, eight years do pass. And now we find Batman who is crippled. He's walking with a cane. I don't even remember him getting hurt. How did he get hurt, you guys? Let me know down below, because I'm assuming it's an injury from the Dark Knight, but I could be mistaken. I keep trying to think about things that happen there at the end, but I don't remember like a huge as far as an injury that could have possibly decapitated, not decapitated him, <laughs> that could have basically put him out of business, you know, was that fall from that building with Rachel. Who knows? I don't know. Yeah, I probably know. Yeah, let me know down below. Can you blame the poor guy? I mean, he lost the woman that he loved. He lost his vigilante role because now Batman is the villain. So, you know, he's literally lost everything. Mind you, now he's broke. So I did not see that coming. I mean, Batman broke. Well, I mean, not Batman, but Bruce Wayne broke. That one was like a shocker for me. I went, what? Now, who else suspected Talia from the beginning? When I first saw her, I went, I bet you, I bet you, you got something to do with this. There was something shady about Talia. I was like, I don't really trust you. Well, Talia is Rosal Gold's daughter, which is played by Liam Leeson. And honest, oh, I forgot. He had like a small, like tiny little cameo in this uh, particular part as well. Of course, we did meet him in Batman Begins, and she is the villain of the story. And I could, we just agree that her death was one of the worst deaths that you could possibly see. Well, like, maybe not ever, but we'll, we'll, we'll put it within the, the year. The commissioner was in the back of the same truck that she was in where she died because you know kind of went over this like bridge you know that ideal <laughs> he came out fine okay perfectly fine mind you this bomb also this this like nuclear whatever the hell that was in the background being tossed turned falling over a bridge you know then kind of gets picked up in the air and going none of that detonates it i mean i just kept wondering why is it not being detonated by that i mean obviously some sort of like big scientific deal that's only with apparently a detonator but i just feel like stuff like that should be more handled with care and i just like you know hitting everything obviously obviously i do prefer this bane over the bane that we got in the 90s i'll post them up here his voice it's kind of like distracting and gotham is ashes you have my permission to die. Like the, the voice was also like a little bit too loud at times. Like it was just like a little bit overpowering. Once you heard it, you knew it was going to be happening throughout the movie. So it's kind of like you just kind of 
get used to it and I honestly did for the most part I mean sometimes it was a little bit distracting really I feel like took him down a lot of levels as far as oh you're this really badass villain because we find out that you're really actually for, uh, working for Talia that might have been when people actually figured out that Talia was that little girl that was down there honestly I didn't figure out that that was Talia I just didn't trust that bitch but I knew that that little girl was not me because it was obviously a little girl that was down in the hole. Since we're in the hole, we're going to go ahead and talk about Bruce when he got drunk into the hole. He was down there for months, right? But then when he came out, I know that a lot of the obvious deal is once he came out, how the hell did he make it back into Gotham? And I feel like it's best not to really think about it. It's more of those things like, just let it be. Just enjoy it and try not to put too much logic into it. Because honestly, while I was watching it, I didn't really think about it. It wasn't until afterward that I was just like, huh, you broke. How the fuck you got resources to like get you from wherever the hell you were at to get you back to Gotham? And mind you, Gotham is like closed and shut down. Like all the fucking bridges are closed. I mean, there's that one little bridge, but like... How the hell did you get back on Gotham? And how the hell did you know exactly where Catwoman was gonna be and you come on like looking kind of fresh? So I really don't have like a huge love for it. I feel like that's why I'm able to kind of like bypass it. But I get it from people who like love Batman Begins, adore the Dark Knight, and then like we get this with like so many like unanswered questions. So I get it, I get it. But for me personally, I, I was able to look past it and just kind of like, okay. I mean, those questions are still in the back of my mind. Alfred, obviously, you know, we only see him like half of the movie. Is it half? Maybe less than half of the movie. But of course, you know, he ends up leaving because, you know, he fears for Bruce Wayne. And it's like, no, I'm not going to see you. Basically, he's not going to bury him also. Like, he's buried the parents. You know, he's not going to be there to bury him. And of course, it was very sad and tragic when that man died right because i feel like that might be another thing like the hero that he did and i feel like he's alive kind of like with taxi driver i mean yeah i think he's alive what do you guys think is he alive or not like did alfred really see him and catwoman sitting on that patio where were they at i don't know it's a beautiful story though when they did mention it or at the end is what we actually did see all right so these are all my thoughts on the dark knight right i'm sure i'm still missing a lot of things that i wanted to discuss but i honestly forgot to write stuff down i've been pretty good at writing my thoughts down while i'm watching totally forgot for this movie <laughs> The Dark Knight Rises honestly is my favorite one out of the trilogy which is kind of funny because it's actually the least loved apparently <laughs> from what I've what I'm read and heard and and it, it seems about right honestly for me because I am somebody who doesn't really go with the norm uh, not to say that I intentionally do it because honestly I didn't really know that it was the least loved one until like later on and I'm just super surprised to be honest with you yes it has its flaws yes it has a lot of like questions that are left unanswered yes but i mean overall i found it to be really entertaining but of course before you guys click out of this video don't forget to give it a like subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet and of course don't forget to hit the notification bell so you'll be notified each time that i post something new till next time i'll see you guys at concessions bye